Uh, once Coach Smith left, uh, I received a text from from Coach saying, "Hey, there may be an opening," and then he said, "Um, <clears throat> I get you on the phone with Coach Pittman, and you know, you just got to sell yourself from there." And so uh, I was able to get on the phone with Coach. Uh, we had a great conversation, and he was like, uh, "You know, one of the first things he wanted to know was I was a, was I a good man or not." Um, <clears throat> You know, the X and O's part um, wasn't the first. It was more, are you a good man? Are you a family man? Are you going to love these kids? These are our core values. And then he, uh, and and that was that. And then, you know, I know he called some other guys and interviewed them. And then he called me that night. He told me I was hired and I was here the next day. <laughs> Sorry, my voice is gone. So. <laughs> Uh, Coach Fouch, uh, kind of the same situation for you, uh, just how you were approached about the job and, and just how it unfolded. Yeah, so I was on a Christmas break at my sister's house, and uh, Coach Petrino had reached out to me, kind of similar situation, and um, got a chance to get on Zoom with Coach Pittman and uh, was very impressed with him from the get-go. I mean, I just knew I wanted to work, obviously, at a higher level here, but just work for him as a head coach. He seemed like a great family man, like Coach said, and just his core values are what I believed in. And um, he asked me about, you know, what I believed in as a coach, as a, you know, a teacher, and um, what type of drills and philosophy philosophies as far as the position but like he said it was a lot more just getting to know me and who I was as a person and that's what I respected about being you know hired by coach Pittman both of you guys have backgrounds with coach Petrino but at different spots I'm just curious uh, your thoughts on on him as a coach and um, just uh, wanting to follow him and, and work under him yeah, I mean, he's been one of, you know, the most influential guys as far as my coaching career and um, teaching me the game and especially the other side of the ball and how to attack defenses and just uh, from the top down, just how le uh, the detail of the program and the offense. And uh, that's what he feels like separates our offense from the pack is just the little things and how we teach the details of the offense. So, I mean, for me, outside of the coaching part, I just I – just, uh, I'm grateful that he believes in me and he cares for who I am and, and the family that I have and, and the trust. Cause obviously I played for him. Um, so it's a little deeper, you know, just him, you know, believing in me as a person, you know what I mean? And then they invited me <clears throat> to become a coach. So that's, that's where that love for him comes. And more than that, um, I'm excited to be here working under Coach Pittman. He's a great guy. Love being around him. I love his energy. Um, I mean, you, you can't have a better coach to play for. Coach Fouch, uh, it's really it kind of just to jumps out at us just how much you're communicating with the offense, not only just the wide receivers, but in 11-on-11 stuff. Is that something you've always done when as a coach? Is that maybe Bobby coming to you before, you know, this and saying like, hey, we've had that connection. Need you kind of to be a, an added voice. I mean, as that what is that what is that what's behind that I guess uh just a little bit of um you know coach Pittman and uh, coach Petrino kind of empowering me to help you know run the show run the offense just having that experience with the system with me and coach Smith and now that he's out there it's it's a lot more help and um he knows the offense we both coach together and just feeding off each other out there but it's just uh, the urgency right now, you know what I mean? We got to get better every day and just the urgency of the install and trying to get better from there and just wanting to get guys in the right spots, just um, just an experience thing of what we're used to. And, you know, Coach Perry just came up here and talked a bunch about the growth of the wide receivers and their leadership. I mean, technically, what have you kind of maybe seen specifically from from Andrew and Tyrone and, and how they've improved uh, as wide outs? Yeah, when I first got here, I, I got with them right away and just um, enjoyed meeting them as people and, and what they're all about. And they're just so motivated, self-motivated um, as a group, those older guys. And they they really push the room. You know what I mean? They call out other people, We you know, before me sometimes. We coach technique. We're really firm on, you know, our splits and alignments. And they'll, you know, help me coach those guys up. And um, they've really just been leading the group from the front. And they want the ball, like Coach Pittman said. And they want their name called on, on key situations, third downs. And um, I've just been impressed with how eager they are to learn and allow me to push them to where they want to go. Hey, Kobe, it's our opinion that Coach Petrino has mellowed out a little bit from his first time here. So you played under him. Is he maybe, uh, you know, maybe backed off the intensity on the field a little bit? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. 
Not at all. Uh, all right, <laughs> you're right. Fire would never leave. So he, he's going to – that's who he is. You know, that's how he's been able to coach for a long time at a high level and have some of the best offense in the country to, and some of the top players really shine under him. So I, you don't want that passion to go away. The running back room, uh, guys who had a 100-yard game, several guys in the depth. <laughs> Can you maybe speak to what you're working with? Uh, we got a bunch of guys that are just hungry for knowledge and understanding and um, trying to grow in the position. Um, so, you know, um, they're working hard every day. Uh, you know, my standard for the room is to play with a sense of urgency, um, understand and um, know the situation of football and uh, play with toughness and be a physical on every play. I want to ask you about uh... – the, the depth in your core. And also, it seemed to me Armstrong and Braxton matched up intentionally. Is that something y'all wanted to happen? Yeah, I mean, Armstrong wants to go against the best every day. And we love one-on-ones. It's a competition. I love Braxton. You know, he gives us a great challenge every day. All those DBs and, and one-on-ones is tough against our corners. And they're they're doing a great job. And um, the depth of the room is, is solid right now. There's a lot of competition um, you guys have mentioned a lot of guys that have stepped up and uh, been very impressed with the, you know, Satania and some of the younger guys, CJ Brown, Dasmond James, Davion Dozier just made a couple good plays. And, and those guys are really stepping up. And the older guys like Wilson and Tesla are, are playing well and, and providing that toughness in the room as well. Coach Smith, Braylon Russell's true freshman. How's he learning the offense? How's, how's he picking up on everything, you know, with the coaching change right down the middle of spring ball and stuff? Um, you know, it's a work in progress. We got some learning we got to do. Um, we're spending a lot of extra time with each other to make sure that he has it down packed. And um, it's going to pay off in the long run. Uh, Isaiah Satina, wide receiver, what have you seen from him? I mean, he kind of offers that speed package, yeah. good hands and stuff. What have you Talk about him. Yeah, so when I I heard about his speed, I heard about you know his high school career, but just getting to know him, he's he he loves the game and he goes hard every day and he every time he comes off the ball, he's going on full speed and uh, I love the way he attacks the football. He's got strong hands and the way he tucks the ball right away, looking to run. You know that's the main thing because we want to get the ball in his hands and let him run with it. So he's doing a great job with his attention to detail. For both of you, is, is Coach Petrino's offense, is it kind of like riding a bike where you show back up and it's pretty much the same thing, or is it evolved since you've been here? Or kind of how does that kind of look? It's it's definitely evolved, you know, since Coach Smith played in it, but the same the same plays are still there, but just some new stuff's been added over the years. So, you know, we just all, you know, keep growing with it, but we always stick to the same um, base of the offense. But there's always new stuff that we love to put in, so – I mean, just how has it changed, you know, maybe since when you played and then, you know, to now? Uh, more so the how we uh, call plays, you know, some of the – it's more of a um, word system more than the digit system like it was in the past. So that's the learning I have to catch up on and grow in and just adapt so that I can be running smoothly come fall. Coach Smith, coming from the NFL back to college, has there been an adjustment period at all, or has it been pretty smooth for you? It's been pretty smooth. Just um, I get here early in the morning, and I leave late at night. So same same schedule. And then with the with the basketballs today, when you were working with the guys, did you maybe just talk through that drill? It looked pretty cool. Yeah, we call that. I usually have soccer balls, but we didn't have them available today. But what we're doing is we're working on – Closing the space between the uh, blitzer and myself, and then from there we're working that we we're mirroring the defender so that we're keeping a get a great base where we're staying inside out. So that's just a starting point of the of, of blitz pickup or uh, pass pro. So that was the beginning stage of it. And then Coach Fouch, you might not work directly with the tight ends a lot, but you know some. A really deep tight end room. Could you maybe talk about those guys? Yeah, I wish I worked with them a little more. They're pretty talented receivers, but uh, I would love to see no, that. But um, they've uh, they've done a great job. They come to one on ones a lot, and they've done a great job understanding the routes. We do a couple type of option routes, stuff like that, and they've done a great job separating at the top of the route. And um, you know, Luke and Gums are very talented, and uh, Andreas has brought some spark, and um, Shamar is a great receiver as well. They really all you know have a lot of value in the pass game. <clears throat> Coach Smith, uh, you mentioned.
in pass pro a little bit there. Last year, Arkansas gave up 47 sacks. Uh, running backs gave up. I mean, all, everybody punched off offensive line, but running backs gave up a lot. And I know Coach Petrino used to say, if you can't pass pro, you can't play for me. Correct. Um, what, do you, what are you guys doing aside from that to, to shore things up? And I also wanted to ask you about Braylon, because you mentioned things to work on with him, and usually freshman running backs, that's one of the, the big things that you got to fix with them. To me, you just got to train it. And when you train it, you, you put them in a situation where they can apply what they've been coaching and they got to do it. So they will do it because they want to play the game. So I don't think we'll have any issues with that. Uh, and Coach Fouch, uh, Tyron Broden, I mentioned to Coach uh, Pittman that he only averaged like 7.3 yards a catch being that big and that fast. Um, what are your thoughts on on what you've got um, in him as a weapon? Very impressed. I mean, just his ability, his position flexibility. We've been putting him inside in the slot a little bit while he's normally an outside receiver in our offense, but just his ability to play in the slot and get mismatches on nickels or linebackers and hit slot fades and things like that and just get him over the middle. It's just such a big frame, easy throw for Taylor and the quarterbacks just to put the ball on him. And um, he's just been impressive to me with his ability to play in the slot as well and just his releases and foot quickness. There's a lot of taller guys. They don't have, you know, the quickest feet but just he has quick feet like Satania and he's 6'6 you know what I mean so it's just been impressive it's just his talent overall I want to ask both of you also um, Coach Smith you coming from the NFL and things have changed in college football in terms of NIL and stuff like that I don't know if you've had a chance to really jump in just yet with recruiting but you have and you're coming from Missouri State it's a different mm -hmm. kind of recruiting up on this level just mm -hmm. curious on your thoughts on the landscape of recruiting now with with NIL and stuff yeah, I mean, it's definitely changing. We have to adapt and to the times. You know, some of us, you know, I was recruited the old school way, and, and that's what I kind of believed in before I got here. But now you have to adapt and adjust to what the guys are looking for, what they're offered, and uh, really just trying to go after the best receivers we can get. You know, I don't care what it takes, but we're going to try and work around things and just get the best situation, the best player we can. Um, <clears throat> one thing I learned from Coach Brian Flores is – you do business as business is being done. So we'll adapt to the situation and we'll make it work for us. I had a question about the scrimmage on Saturday. Just what do you guys hope to see from your group Saturday? Hoping to see consistency, like Coach Pittman said, just in the past game. Want to have a cleaner day um, and go make some plays, get the ball in the end zone for sure, and um, get just get our confidence going on offense and get the flow and get in and out of the huddle. You know, we're still trying to get used to different periods of tempo, fastballs, huddling, and uh, just the operation things. Want to see go well. I'm looking for big plays, um, explosive runs. Uh, it's just explosive plays from, from the back, so, you know, 15-yard runs, 20-yard receiving runs, um, plays, um, standing up in the pocket and protecting when we get blitzes and um, just being situ situational sound in those situations. And, you know, at the end of the day, I want them having fun. Well, I appreciate you. Sorry. Thank you, guys.